Hi, I'm Carrie Visclonis with Reset Brain and Body here to talk to you as we continue to talk about relationships. So today I want to talk to you about the most important thing to focus on in a relationship. And you probably already know what I'm going to say, and it is the big C word, communication. Uh, this is just one of those things that we hear over and over and over again as the reason why most couples argue. One of the main reasons for divorce is communication, separation, communication, infidelity, communication, fighting, communication. And people might say, oh, well, it's because of other factors, finances, infidelity, job loss, things like that, but communication or lack thereof usually leads to problems in these categories. So what do we do with communication? Because you can just say, you need to communicate with your partner more, but what does that actually mean? So I'm gonna break it into three different subsets to give you some tangible tools that you can use with your partner to put into place today to help you perhaps fix some areas in your relationship that need some work or to be preventative so that your relationship doesn't fall into any of those categories that I mentioned before or into the slippery slope that can happen when communication does start to give way. Okay, so number one is setting expectations. And so this can be, it can go about it in a different, in a few different ways. So one is that you've probably heard this before, but planning for the week and setting aside time to actually sit down and say, hey, what do you have on your calendar? What do I have in mind? What are the kids doing? But having some sort of shared weekly schedule. I have a um, colleague slash client slash whatever person in my life who told me a story about how she was throwing a baby shower and her husband had to work and the baby shower was on their shared calendar. And her husband said, well, you know, I'm gonna be at work and I'm gonna be at work till 11. And she said, well, wait a second. I, the baby shower starts at 11. And he's like, okay, well, like, we'll give you plenty of time. I'll be home and then you can go. And she was like, no, 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 the baby shower's at our house. And it was one of those perfect situations of, wait, well, wait a second, how did that get missed? How did you guys not communicate that there's people coming over to your house? And so it doesn't matter if there's a weekly calendar that you share, where are the details in that? Where is the communication? And how to set the expectations with that? And so having something tangible where you're actually sharing what the plans are for the week sharing, okay, what do you have to do today? What do I have to do? Who's picking up from where? Who's cooking dinner? What are we gonna make for dinner? The daily responsibilities. But bigger than this, and what helps set expectations even better is if you're assigning large chunks of responsibilities. So versus, hey, can you go pick up Charlie from daycare today because I have this meeting, but I'll whip dinner together while you're there. Like that just feels frenetic and chaotic versus someone owning a particular layer of the household, almost like you guys are two co-owners coming in together and saying, okay, I'm really good at the details and the spreadsheet and the numbers, so I'm gonna handle this book of the business. And you're really good with communication and organizing, so you're gonna handle this book of the business. And playing to your strengths, and so nothing feels unequal, but you truly are co-owning the household. And this is something that you have to start poking holes at some of the layers of how society has been built to think that specifically women or moms have to take on a lot of the household responsibilities because truly it's just tradition and we can redefine how the household looks. And so setting expectations, sitting with your partner, making a plan for the week, but then looking at this even bigger and saying, okay, what can we really shift within the household so that we feel like there's equal parts ownership in different layers of the household so that you can trust the other person to be able to handle grocery shopping, or you can trust the other person to handle the birthday parties or trust the other person to handle school registration or whatever it is because there's different people that own, again, different parts of the business that's the household. Okay, 
Number two, emotionally checking in. So at our practice, our couples counselor, Kara, has named this EICs, Emotional Identification Check-ins, EICs. And these are times when you check in with your partner, ideally at least once a week, but this could even be throughout the week, asking more emotionally layered questions. Hey, uh, is there something like unknowingly underneath the surface causing you stress this week that I need to be aware of? Maybe you have a big presentation at work, or maybe you had a a distressing phone call with a family member that you haven't shared yet with your partner, but something that you feel like you need to know about or your partner should know about so that you can understand of why like they're kind of running at this high level of anxiety under the surface. And, and I really want to be clued into that and giving your partner an opportunity to be clued into that, right? Another question is, um, how can I more support you this week or today or this month? You can break it down by the level of frequency, but ideally minimally once a week, you're asking these questions. Are there things I can do to most support you? And this goes back to what we were talking about last week is you entered into this partnership because you care deeply about this person. You want this person to succeed. And so often because of lack of communication, resentment builds up. We start tallying, right? This person did this, this person did that. They're not doing that. But if you really want this person to succeed, you really want to check in with them and say, how can I support you? How can I help you? How, what can I do to help you succeed this week? To help you feel healthier? Hey, I know that you have a lot going on, so it's really important you probably get your run in. So if that means I need to wake up a little bit earlier so I can watch the kids so you can go to your run, like let's talk about it. But the same goes for then you asking the same for your partner. Again, this has to go both ways. You both are emotionally checking in. What do you need more or less of this week? How can I help you with that? And both partners need to be bought into this communication. You're both giving and receiving. EICs. And then lastly, with communication is quality time. And this is daily quality time. I can't tell you how many times partners say, we are like ships passing in the night. How many of you feel that way with your partner, especially with kiddos, ships passing in the night? Not a lot of time for quality time. Or if there is quality time, it's at 1030 at night, both people on their phones with some show on while you're laying in bed. Quality time looks like going on a walk together, doing the dishes together, actually talking at the dinner table, not watching a show, but actually sitting next to each other in bed waking up early before the kids and enjoying your coffee together and talking. Once a day, 20 minutes. It's the same 20 minute rule that I assigned to you to give each one of your kids. Your partner needs to be within that 20 minute rule. Everyone needs 20 minutes, including you. So, okay, now you might be looking at me like, oh my God, that's an hour of my day. I have children, I have myself, and I have my husband. That means I have an hour a day of quality time yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but it's it really, really important for the power of your relationships. 20 minutes to yourself, 20 minutes to your partner, 20 minutes to each kiddo of quality time. Reading books, going on a walk, playing outside, playing in the bedroom, whatever it is that you want to do, but equal part to yourself as well. 20 minutes for yourself too. You could take a 20 minute shower. I don't care, but give 20 minutes to yourself too. Because then when you go to give 20 minutes to your partner, you're not resentful. Again, what we're trying to do <laughs> is avoid resentment. Resentment is what erodes a relationship. All right, you think of relationship, resentment erodes it. Communication and these three steps within communication, setting expectations, emotional identification check-ins and quality time help build up the foundation of communication so that we aren't eroding it through resentment getting in and all those little crevices that we create when communication falls apart. Questions, comments, feedback, please drop anything in the comments. Happy to continue the conversation. I will see you next week. Hope you all have a lovely day.